With a population of over 82 million, Germany is the biggest energy consumer in Europe. To meet its demand, the country has been heavily dependent on imports, a subsidised coal industry and a significant number of nuclear power stations. After the first energy crisis, Germany moved towards nuclear power and energy saving. Uh, so that were the two main directions. Uh, and there was a, a combination with hard coal promotion policy. Uh, this means uh, that uh, until the liberalization of the energy markets in the late 1990s, we had a combination of power generation of lignite power stations, uh, hard coal power stations and nuclear, uh, and the rest was a little bit natural gas and renewable, mainly hydropower. But in 1986, an event occurred that was to profoundly change the course of German energy policy. The world's worst nuclear power accident at Chernobyl prompted a sea change in public opinion. Chernobyl changed the attitude of the Social Democratic Party and the trade unions, and um, it also changed the uh, uh, position within the utilities, because uh, since then no new contracts were uh, closed and, and even uh, plans were uh, put back in the drawer. So uh, that's one side. The other is that the public opinion in Germany since then has very strong against nuclear. And this is still the case uh, also in comparison to other countries like Sweden or Finland. Uh, in Germany is anti-nuclear. Although the German Green movement had long opposed nuclear power, the strength of public reaction to Chernobyl eventually led to a government decision to phase out all nuclear plants by 2025. At the moment, uh, there are 17 nuclear power stations operating in Germany, and their contribution for electricity generation is in the range of 26, 27 percent. The phase-out policy means uh, that the utilities are not interested for the moment in constructing new nuclear power plants. It's too risky. But this decision has presented a massive challenge for policymakers. How will Germany's electricity demand be met in the coming decades? The substitution of the nuclear will be a mix of uh, fossil fuels, hopefully clean ones, uh, so uh, in first hand natural gas. But if uh, it's possible to use clean coal power stations, then this will also have a part and uh, naturally also uh, renewable energy sources um, and last but not least energy efficiency. So we have to reduce our electricity consumption in the long run. To meet its ambitious CO2 reduction targets, it was to renewables that policymakers turned to find a long-term solution to Germany's electricity needs. The passing of the renewable energy law in 2000 marked a dramatic shift in the pace of change towards a sustainable energy future. The turning point uh, was the Renewable Energy Act um, with its uh, special philosophy. And the philosophy is to um, allow to make uh, investments for renewables possible without asking the power companies if uh, they accept that, if they would accept that. Uh, that means it was the uh, first energy law since decades uh, which uh, was adopted against uh, the power companies. And the result is now that uh, we have um, an annual um, new installation for renewables in the electric power sector of 3,000 megawatt annual. One of the most significant aspects of this new law was the introduction of the feed-in tariff. The feed-in tariff uh, is uh, basically an uh, obligation of the utilities to take renewable energy uh, into the grid and to pay a certain remuneration for it. Uh, the table of today's remuneration is very complicated because it also has to stimul uh, stimulate innovation of, of a technology. So it's depreciated uh, uh, each year uh, and uh, it work, works very well. 
the prospect of premium rates being paid for energy fed into the grid resulted in a huge demand for solar panels and wind turbines. We created with the law a market and uh, <clears throat> the guaranteed price uh, is for the uh, investor, for the supplier, the power supplier. That means for the people who buy the windmills. The more productive the windmill, the higher the profit. That means our law is a strong incentive for technological improvements, for um, the improvement of the productivity of windmills. And therefore it gave a strong push for the technological development of the windmill industry. Although the growth in wind energy has been hailed by many as a major success story, the sizing of turbines, and in particular large wind farms, has generated controversy. If someone compares a free landscape with a landscape with windmills, he may be disturbed by that. But this is not a fair comparison. One must compare a landscape with windmills and the landscape which is um, touched everywhere by the emissions, the acid rain, uh, its damages for the sea, for all uh, water resources, it damages for the forests, it damages for the climate. Alongside wind power, Germany is continuing to develop other renewable sources of energy. The most prominent form today since last year is wind power, uh, followed up by hydropower, which is partly large hydro and small hydro. And then uh, biomass uh, power plants are also increasingly important. There has also been an enormous growth in solar photovoltaic power. Based in Berlin, Solon AG is one of a new generation of companies riding the wave of a burgeoning alternative energy industry boosted by further legislation that includes a requirement to reduce energy demand of all new buildings by an average of 30%. Since the introduction of the EEG, the Renewable Energies Act in 2004, we have seen a huge demand growing for uh, photovoltaic systems in Germany. Germany being the biggest market uh, now for photovoltaic uh, technology. So uh, this is also reflected in the numbers of our company. We've been able to grow output and revenues by about 100% annually uh, in the past years, since 2004. Um, so um, we are seeing a big growth in the market. This particular plant is a trial plant for Solon. We have uh, developed the Solon Mover about three years ago. And before launching it to the mass production and the mass market, we have built this uh, plant as a trial. Uh, the renewable energy industry uh, became uh, the most successful new industry with the highest growth number. We have an annual growth rate of 30% in the turnovers and even uh, in the job creations. And uh, we are, I think, only at the beginning of this process. Uh, we created 170,000 new jobs and I think um, uh, we will arrive at one million and more. There's no doubt that the last decade has seen Germany take significant steps towards a sustainable energy future, but some remain impatient at the pace of change. Germany does enough to promote renewable energy in the electricity sector, um, but um, Germany does nearly nothing to promote renewable energy in the sector of, of heating and cooling. And um, so we are discussing with our, our environmental uh, ministry um, to set up uh, uh, some kind of a feed-in law for um, heating and cooling um, by renewable energies, but um, it's not clear if we do it. But uh, Bund um, is, is pushing strong for such a law. However far the country still has to go, Germany has come further than most of its European neighbours there is an increasing conviction that German energy policy makes economic sense and that where Germany leads, others will inevitably follow. Conventional energies, fossil as uh, nuclear, will go up. Uh, there's no way out. 
there are um, rising fuel costs, rising infrastructural costs, rising environmental costs, and uh, rising security costs. The costs for renewables can only go down. There are no fuel costs, with the exception of biomass. Uh, there are uh, low infrastructural costs. Uh, the only costs um, are costs for technology, and technology costs go down by industrial uh, mass production and further technological improvements. That's very clear.